because we love to be in the presence of God. God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And when we're praising him, and he comes in, and he's loving on us, we're loving on him, and he will speak to us in our spirits. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You just absorb that. But that's, that's actually where I got what I'm sharing with you is in praise in my living room. All by myself, Paul had the kids somewhere cleaning up. I was supposed to be cleaning the house, but I was dancing around like a maniac in the living room. <laughs> and um, this song came on, it's an old hill song, song, and I only know it's old because I asked Adam to do it, and he said it was old. <laughs> Too old for us to do, I guess, not cool anymore. But um, the hill song, All I Need Is You, and as I'm singing the song, I'm like, All I Need Is You. And I was like, God, I really wish. I wish I could sing this to you truthfully. I actually said that to God, like, <laughs> seriously. Um, and it just spoke to my spirit and said, all you need is in me. You have everything you need in me. I gave it to you in Christ. And he just gave me this, this phrase. And when God speaks to you, he might just give you a word. And it's up to you to go to your Bible and search in your word and confirm that what you heard was from God. And then expand on that and see what he's really saying to you. And I've known that all I had, that all I needed was in Christ. I've heard this before, but until then, like head knowledge and what's in your heart can sometimes be different. Like I had it in my head, but I had not clicked in my spirit. And in this time of worship, that clicked with my spirit. I said, Praise God. Like I was just in awe. Oh, like I have everything I need. <coughs> like I, I have some bills. And I was like, You have, you have, you know, you're prosperous in me. But in Jesus, we know now that God's not mad with us. But in Christ, He gave us everything we need. When he died, he took our sins, and he took our infirmities. When he rose from the grave, he conquered the grave, and the same spirit that conquered the grave lives in us. And when he ascended back to heaven, and God sat him at his right hand, God put Satan under his feet. God put every principality, every darkness, every name, is under his feet, and we are seated with him. As Ephesians 2, 6, we're seated with him. God wants us to live a victorious life. He wants us to live and walk knowing that everything that we need in this life is in him. It is in Christ. We are healed in him. We are blessed in him. Every promise, everything good that's in that book is mine. Through him. It, it, it's all ours. God doesn't want you depressed. He doesn't want you sick. He doesn't want you... I had a list of things he doesn't want you. <laughs> he doesn't want you in poverty or in sin. God wants you just walking in this light that everything that you need ever is in Christ. And just knowing it isn't going to be enough. It has to click in your spirit. You have to get in your word and read these promises. I think Elizabeth, I gave you a voice. Is it up there? I'm not going to read all these scriptures to you because that would take a long time. But if you guys want to draw them down or take a snapshot or whatever, these this is a list of very good things. But when you get into your word, don't just read aimlessly. Have a purpose. Our pastor, Pastor Brian on Living Faith, has a website, and we have like, daily scriptures that we go to. And it's good to read with a purpose and not just... I used to like pick up my Bible and be like, okay, I got my three chapters in today. woo yeah. you know, like You want to read with purpose and... Pray before you read. Get in the presence of God. Like I'll be in my room by myself and I'll turn on some crazy music and dance around or go out in the living room and 
have my kids, we just get together and we praise together and we speak the word together and we speak the word over our lives because that word's not going to do anything to sit in the book. It's got to come out of your mouth. We have the power of life and death in our tongue and we have to speak that life over ourselves, over our children and our families and you're never too young to do this and you're never too old. <laughs> Teenagers, you've got colleges you want to go to, you've got places that you want to go in your life. Start speaking that over your life now. You get so excited to see where my children are going to be because I didn't grow up with all this knowledge and this revelation of how much God loved me and how He wanted me to have everything good in this life. So I'm so excited for my kids because I'm putting that in them now. I'm so excited. <laughs> Once you really grasp the hold of the promises that God's given you and how much He loves you. And when I, the moment that it clicked with me, how much God loved me, because I was just reading in uh, Romans 8:15. It says, God has not given you, or you do not have a spirit again to fear. Well, I'm going to mess it up now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we receive the spirit of adoption. Right when we cry out, Abba Father. And I was like, oh man. I know that my dad wants good things for me. But the creator of the universe wants good things for me. How blessed am I? And that love, once you experience that love and you really grasp for the love that he has for you, that's what's gonna push you forward. You know, I don't I don't love my husband because he yells at me and tells me to love him. I love him because he loves me and he shows me love and in the Bible they kind of coincide like you know our relationship like a married relationship and our, you know we're the bride of Christ and you know like I kind of likened it to, to a love story and how sad it would be if the love story was only one side because God's love is never going to change for us we have the choice of whether, you know, it's going to be a great love story or it's going to be a bad one. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Good. Let's see where I am on my time. So I just encourage you all tonight to find your love story in God. To, to he, he knew us in the womb. But he wrote my story a long time ago before I was on this earth. And I want to live the story that he wrote for me. The only way for me to do that is to walk it with him.